Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Zone 8A garden. And today we're going to be doing a May garden tour. It's the last week in May and I'm excited to show you all what all is blooming in my garden. Okay, so I'm actually gonna split my garden tour into two parts. I've had some complaints about it being a little too long. So I'm gonna do the front and side yard in part one, and I'm gonna do the backyard in part two. They're gonna be posted one day apart, so you won't have to wait very long for either of them. Okay, and Jeff is helping me out filming today, so we will do our best to you guys give him a cheer, give him a positive comment down below, and that would be great. Okay, so I do wanna take a moment just to show you all what's going on with the bubblegum petunia in the front yard. So this is one bubblegum petunia right here, and you can see it is going bonkers and climbing up my dwarf Alberta spruce right here. It is absolutely beautiful. I'm thrilled with it. These don't do really well in the heat of the summer for me. I am gonna try pruning them back like several of y'all have suggested, but right now it's just going wild and I absolutely love it. Okay, so here we are on the front porch. I just wanted to show y'all a quick update on all the plants I've planted on the front porch. We had this one container that has three varieties of Kong coleus in it doing beautifully. A couple of the begonias, these are the proven winners, like double up begonia or something along those lines doing beautiful. We have the variegated pittosporum doing wonderful, but several people have asked about this one particular design right here, asked how it's doing. So this has a diamond frost euphorbia in it, which is doing great. And then I also planted some of the star of Bethlehem bulbs, which you can see started sprouting. So let me let Jeff get a close up of all this. Now, as you can see, I've had to rotate it a little bit. Originally, these were more up front, so I've kind of rotated as um, it's continued to grow so that some of the ones at the back can start growing. But it's doing really well, I'm really excited, and I will definitely continue to, continue to update you all about this design. Okay, so continuing the front yard, I did a recent project where I removed the viola border that was all along here. It was viola, muscari, and daffodils, and I cut all of that back, and I backfilled it with tiny sunflowers. So make sure you check out that video. But the front of the garden is just bursting with color, full and gorgeous. The super petunias are filling in every nook and cranny, which that's what I really love about that variety of petunias. Now, Jeff's gonna come closer. I wanna show you guys a couple of things that's going on over here. These plants right here that are coming up are a bulb called Leatra. So they are a purple bulb and they'll give me long elongated um, purple flowers. They're also known as gay feather. And these are really fun perennial bulb comes back year after year and they make for really great cut flowers. Now, right beside it, you can see some blooms popping up on my uh, tiny, it's my quick fire hydrangea and it's the miniature quick fire hydrangea. Let me look at it, little quick fire. I couldn't remember the word. And you can see my bloom starting to pop up on it. I'm very excited. This is its second year in the garden. I actually planted it last fall. So it, has, it actually hasn't even had a full year yet, but it's looking beautifully. And then directly behind it back here, you can see the delphinium starting to come up. These are delphinium seedlings that I planted in a prior video. And right above it, you all can see the last of the red lark delphinium that are tall and straight and beautiful. The flowers are starting to die back. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna allow it to go to seed and I'm hoping to save some of the seeds so I can start some of these on my own next year. Okay, so the hookahs are continuing to do really well. The star of the show has definitely been the black pearl hookra. And that's this particular one right here. I've got, um, the cherry truffles over here and the wild berry here, um, flanking it on either side. But the black pearl has just, it's probably triple the size of the other ones planted at the same time. It's doing beautifully. It's put off all of its um, flowers, which are gorgeous. It easily has 30 stems on it, which is absolutely beautiful. And they're so fun and whimsical and people always ask about them. But they're looking really good and I'm so inspired by it that I would like to maybe incorporate one or two more of these in the garden in the future. Now, 
immediately to the right of it, I still have hellebore up, even though we're starting to reach 90 degree temps. These are Merlin hellebore flowers, and this is what the flowers look like after they've already done their massive bloom cycle. So they turn green as they age. But this continues to be absolutely beautiful in this area. Once these have all died back, I'll clip back some of the leaves and allow more of the plants to come through. Now, this, this is one <laughs> bubblegum petunia, super, uh, super petunia here. And then I've got one fuchsia and then I have another bubblegum, but it has gone bonkers. It's climbing through everything, including this right here. This plant coming up underneath is a purple mum, a perennial mum that comes back every year. And it is actually going to bud, will probably bloom by mid to late June, but it's doing really beautiful. As are the containers back here. Got petunia spilling out, verbena, uh, salvia greggy, and then of course the Henry Dulberg salvia, which is looking beautiful. We are getting to the time where it's gonna be time for me to start cutting back some of my perennials and refreshing them for the summer. I'll probably do that the second or third week in June, just to give them a little reprieve so they're not trying to produce blooms during the hottest part of the year. Now, coming back here, this has been a long anticipated, everybody's been asking for updates on this particular planter. And this planter, I utilize branches that would work as a trellis or kind of like a hold for the gladiolus coming up. And as you can see, we have our first gladiolus stalk coming up from the planter. It's about four feet tall. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna have Jeff come over here and get a close up of these blooms. They are called Passos. I can't remember if that's the full name, but they're absolutely beautiful purple with a dark kind of purple fuchsia throat. Absolutely beautiful. They're looking really good. And you can see how the branches are working as a trellis system to hold up these taller blooms. This guy is actually woven through the branches. So it's looking really, really nice. are growing beautifully. I don't see buds yet. So they're actually a little bit later than they were last year. Now, last year at this time in May, we ended up having 20 days of 90 or above temperatures in the month of May. It was brutally hot really early, but this year we are on just, we're going straight. We're just natural, normal temperatures. We are hitting some 80s, a little bit of 90s, but not much, but all of our temperatures have been normal for zone 8a in my particular area for the month of may so the limelight hydrangeas i'm hoping that they're not going to be blooming until the end of june which would be wonderful now this whole area is an area that i reworked this season focusing on warmer colors i installed um, the new adoration barbary and i'll let jeff get up here close so that you can see how unique this particular shrub is it is a dark red burgundy color and it has kind of a lime green margins around the leaves. Absolutely beautiful. And it goes really well with the yellow heated up Gallardia right below it, which is looking really beautiful. So the Gallardia is annual for me. It is said to be a perennial in our particular area, but I've never found it to go come back for me. And then if you remember that flat of salvia, annual salvia that I had, it has filled in and the mix of colors with the purples and the reds and the corals and the peaches really helps to blend different um, colors throughout the garden. This is almost a culmination of all the colors right in this area. salsa dancer hibiscus it's not blooming yet but it will bloom in the heat of the summer it's looking really good tucked in this vintage terracotta pot back here okay so this area is an area that i just finished up there is a video um i don't know if it's going to be out before this garden tour video but what i did is i did a refresh of this area it used to have pansies and violas all the way across the front i pulled all of those up 
I left most of the Dusty Millers, which are actually flowering back here and they're absolutely beautiful. I left most of the Dusty Millers out here because I really like the contrast. Now, I did go back and add right here and right there, I added the Proven Winner Sun Credible and Saturn. And those I had last year and they did beautiful. They were like three, four feet tall, absolutely gorgeous. So this little plant right here will get big and full and gorgeous and the Dusty Miller will kind of be around the base of it, which I think will look really nice. I put one feature plant in the center. This is a perennial um, hibiscus, and I'm blanking on the name. I think it's like Chaco something or other. I'll put it down below so you guys can see, but this is one of the summerific hibiscus by Proven Winners, and it has beautiful white blooms with bright, bright pink veining, and it should bloom and bloom and bloom throughout the hottest parts of the summer, which will be that's one of my big struggles is having blooms during the summer. It's a really hard thing in this area. And so it became a focus starting in the fall. I started planting a lot of perennials that do well during the summer. This is another one of them. And then across the front of the bed, I did, I believe it's double hot cherry zinnias across the front. These are profusion zinnias. Each one of these gets about 12 to 24 inches wide and it should fill up the whole front of the border, which is literally my favorite thing to do. I love a mass of flowers across the front. I don't want to see the ground. I utilize flowers and plants as my mulch or ground cover and I don't really want to see the ground at all. It really helps choke out the different weeds and such. I do have my crepe myrtle in the back. I believe it's a black diamond crepe myrtle. I don't love crepe myrtles. I actually, this used to be tree form and we cut it down because I didn't love it very much. I like the bush style better. I think it looks nicer. It also chokes out a lot of the weeds back behind it, which I think is extremely helpful. Okay, so one thing I've been experimenting with this year is super bells, and they're also known as calabracoa. That's how I say it. I know people pronounce it a million different ways, but I've always been, I've utilized super bells in different containers and stuff like that, and they're always very picky. So this year I kept it very simple, and I planted super bells in their own container. And you can see this variety right here. I don't believe I know the name of this particular variety. I don't see a tag anywhere. But anyway, I've got this um, Super Bells in here, or the Calabracoa, and I have it just in a pot here, and then I ran drip to it, and it's just kind of doing its own thing. It is very happy by itself. It does, it's such a drama queen. It doesn't want to share space with anybody. But I did that here and in one other location in the front of the garden. I'm very happy with the way they look. I love the look of Calabracoa. The problem is, is it, it just doesn't do very well. So I'm really happy to finally find a way to incorporate it in my garden where it's not gonna die within a couple of weeks. Now, over here flanking it, these tall green lush areas right here are dahlias. The particular variety is called Color Spectacle. And these are dahlia tubers that I leave in the ground year round. I don't mess with them, I don't do anything with them. And they keep coming back for me, which is, y'all know, just shocking for this area. Typically for zone 8A, we have to lift our tubers at the end of the season in order to have them not rot out. These keep doing fine. They're pretty much the only dahlias I've ever been able to grow well. So I will just always keep them in this area. Their um, bloom is a big, beautiful kind of orangey coral bloom. Absolutely gorgeous. And they do look like they're going to produce a, quite a bit. Looks like each of the tubers put off like three to five main stems, which is amazing. Okay, so one of the plants that has become one of my favorite plants is a penstemon, and Jeff's going to come up close to show you guys some flowers. This is a mystery penstemon that I planted years ago. It's a perennial for me in my area. I just love the look of these blooms. They're so lacy and petite and beautiful, and they make for excellent cut flowers. Its foliage at the base is just a nice deep dark green. They're very easy to care for. I never fertilize them. I never mess with them, and they just produce a year after year. I've really grown to love and appreciate penstemon and I would like to incorporate some of that to my garden in the future. Now let's chip this way before Jeff falls off the side. You okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so 
So here's my red, yellow, and blue primary color containers. Everybody's doing really good. You can see that the canna lily, Oklahoma, is doing beautiful. I think it's called Miss Oklahoma. It's doing beautiful and shooting up. It should be about this tall when it decides to bloom. I've also got it mixed with the plumbago, which is a really pretty kind of blue periwinkle color. I've got it mixed with red celosia and these really sweet petunias. Now, the petunias will die out the hotter we get. They'll probably be gone the third week in June, but the celosia, the plumbago, and the canna lilies will keep on chunky. They should do absolutely beautiful. Below them, I had some explosion grass reseed itself. I'll have to get Jeff to come in here close and see because this stuff is super cool. I grow this for arrangements and I had it reseed itself this year and I'm absolutely in love with it. I would love for it to continue to reseed itself. These are super fun to cut for arrangements and they just look very cool in the garden. They're kind of a unique texture. Okay, so across this area, this is an area I've been working on quite a bit. I worked a lot on it in the fall. It is kind of anchored by this Pugster butterfly bush. I believe it's deep blue, I think is the variety. It does really well. This particular variety, um, this is Proven Winners, it usually succumbs to spider mites during the summer and I end up having to cut it all the way down to the base, but it grows back. So it doesn't really bother me all that much. It is accented by all these meteor showers of verbena, which reseed themselves. Now, these were about this tall yesterday. I actually cut them back dramatically and gave a bunch of flowers to my mom, but we are planning on a vacation. And so I've been harvesting a lot of the flowers so that everything can kind of rebloom while we're gone. Now, it started a few perennials by seed last year, including these Peter Cottontail Yarrow, which came back beautifully. This is a green twister echinacea. It hasn't come back yet. And then I have additional echinacea over here. These are double parad um, paradisio double something or other. I'll drop the name below. Coneflowers or echinacea. This has come back like with full force from seed. Absolutely beautiful. Doing good. And then I also have a autumn, let's see, I think this is an autumn fire sedum. And this sedum is coming back beautifully. It's ready to start harvesting and including in um, some of my floral arrangements. But I really like the look of this design. It's come back beautifully. I would like to install some kind of beautiful trellis, something along on these walls. I still haven't figured out, still been working through it. I don't want to spend a ton of money, but I want it to be beautiful and I want to add some height here and I don't want it to just be the trellis. I want something to be growing on it, but this is the side of the house that gets full west sun. So it gets a really, really hot sun. Right now it's about seven o'clock at night and if we didn't have cloud cover, we would be busted up with sun all the way across this. So whatever I end up having crawling on this or trailing on this particular trellis is gonna have to put up with some serious heat. So I'd be very interested to see what a lot of y'all have to say about that. section of the garden that I have kind of neglected this year. This is a double bridal respirea with a coordinating one on the other side. They produce beautiful white flowers. They're all done blooming for the season and usually by this time I've cut them back. I've just been focused on so many other areas. So once I get back from vacation this will be one of the primary areas I'll begin working on. I'll start by cutting this back significantly on this bridal spire, uh, this uh, double bridal respirea. If I did not prune it, this sucker would be eight feet tall, and that's not what I'm wanting for my garden. Now, the centerpiece of this particular area is this Ruby Falls Weeping Red Bun, which is stunning, but you can see it's very, very tight in its growth. It's time for me to go through and start cutting in some of this, cutting out some of the center leaves and allowing some of the limbs to kind of have a little bit more airflow. 
The reason I say that is if it gets too compacted, it can really kind of cause disease and pests to hide within this tree. And this tree is a beautiful, expensive centerpiece within my garden. I want to make sure I'm caring for that. So I will have a video on how I'm taking care of that. And then across the bottom, I just have all the violas. They're just done for the year. They're over it. And so I do need to pull those up. I do have a few echinacea that are coming back in this area. I believe this is the Cheyenne Spirit varieties, which means it's a wide variety of colors, anywhere from red, orange, pink, to yellow, even to white. But this will be a big fun area to work on once I get back from vacation. Okay, so to the right of the bridal respirey right here, you can see that all of my balloon flowers are coming back. These are perennial in my area, and I love them for this little look. See right here, they actually look like little balloons right there. They're so sweet. If you squeeze this, it would just totally squash it, but then they bloom and open up into these beautiful kind of star-like blue flowers. Absolutely pretty. Love them and enjoy them every year. They're perennials, which is great. Now, this is the container that used to have the um, topiary in it, which died, took it back to Callaway's, they took it back, refunded me, great. So I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with it yet. So for the time being, I put in a trellis, I planted a black-eyed Susan vine in here, and I surrounded the base with purslane. Now purslane is one of my go-to plants for the summer. It just loves and loves the heat and does beautifully. So I basically just surround up the whole base and I did that so that it would kind of help with water retention in these containers and then you can see that my black eyed Susan vine is definitely climbing and growing and reaching this one looks actually a little sad right here looks like maybe somebody was munching on it I'll just break that off to get started but it is climbing around and looking really good now in this negative space right here i used to have a white guara it succumbed to spider mites earlier in the spring this year it's really weird to have spider mites so early but it is gone i will look at replacing that now this portion of the garden is super fun because i have so many new plants in here that i planted last fall but they were itty bitty so it's really fun to show you all some of the stuff the first one right here, this is a, an aster, a Lavis bluebird aster. It had one branch that bloomed really well, and Jeff, I'll get you close in so you can see some of this. Um, you can see a little bit of the blooms, but it blooms these really tiny purple uh, aster blooms with yellow centers, and that one branch bloomed, but all these other branches are coming in full bloom. I'm really excited. This is a very large plant, and it will fill in this area beautifully. Around the base of it, I have, um, it's something storm verbena. I'll drop the name below, but it is a perennial and it is going around the base of the um, aster. It's really pretty and I think the colors go really well together. Now, these are not super attractive right now. These are my Dalmatian, my ivory, let's see, Dalmatian ivory foxglove. They are at the end of their growing season. They were beautiful and at one point all completely filled with blooms. Right now I am allowing them to go to seed. I would love for some more of them to kind of come up in this particular area. These are perennials for me and so they've come back. Um, this is their second year that they've come back and they only get prettier each season. And then I've got several iris tucked in. They've all already bloomed at this point. And I definitely enjoyed the um, bearded iris more than I thought I would. In fact, I'm actually kind of looking, maybe I'll invest in the fall in some new ones for next year, we'll see. But I'm excited about them. And I've enjoyed kind of this spiky green gray foliage coming up in different places. Now, as we work around the front, I've already got more of my zinnias. This is, um, I believe, the profusion salmon variety of zinnias. These are planted about a month ago. They've already doubled in size. They will cover this whole area. I still have these containers that have snapdragons, violas, and dianthus. These are all cool um, annuals. And so it is time to change these out, cut everything back more, and redo these particular containers just haven't gotten around to it. I've had a lot of other things I've been messing around with. Now, one of my new plants that I have in here is this over here, and Jeff, why don't you come close for some of these. This is a salvia, and it's called Wind Walker Royal Red. 
And, you know, when I looked at it online, I was like, oh, Pretty Red Salvia. And I thought, oh, Wind Walker, what a fabulous name. Now that I have been growing it, I understand why it's called a Wind Walker. Because as Jeff steps, steps back, let me show you where this plant has gone. It has come all the way forward, all the way here. And it has gone all the way backwards over here to the side, just reaching out in different places. So I feel like the name Windwalker is so appropriate for the name of this particular salvia, since it goes here, over there, all the way back over here. And I'm just letting it grow. It's not forming any kind of roots in those areas. It's literally just sending long extended branches. And so I think it's really fun that it kind of tucks up and shows in different areas but it's been a really fun plant. And then in addition, this is my Golden Falls Weeping Red Bud right here. And yes, it sounds very familiar because it was the Ruby Falls was over there. This is the Golden Falls. So it has this beautiful yellow green color in this area, very unique and different. I call it my cousin it tree because of the generic kind of general shape of it reminds me of that character cousin it. It's doing beautiful as a focal point in the garden. Now, down below, I finally have some cool blooms coming up. I do have Shasta daisies. Proven Winter sent me these last year. Y'all know I don't like Shasta daisies, but I decided to try them out. These are the banana cream Shasta daisies and they are getting ready to bloom. So I hope they put on quite the show. It looks like they're gonna be mostly blooming in June, which will be great. And then right behind it is an Echinops. Uh, this one is Echinops Retro, and it is gonna have blue, beautiful blue flowers. This is a perennial for me in this area. I got this particular one from Bluestone Perennials. It's looking really good. That's gonna be a fun plant to show y'all as it blooms. Okay, so I do have a couple of volunteer sunflowers, which are looking really pretty here. I didn't have the heart to pull them up. Below them is some of the super bina from Proven Winners called Ice Cherry. It is not done so hot. Um, it has not, we haven't even gotten that hot and it's not doing very well. I made sure it has dripped to it. It's Everything's been fine with it. It's just not happy here. So I think I'm gonna be pulling that up. That's supposed to be a perennial in my area. Now back behind here, I've got some beautiful um, coneflowers coming up. I can't recall the exact name of this variety and I didn't leave the tag in because that was dumb. Um, but they are coming up and they're beautiful. Uh, the, the pink coming up and they're beautiful. Um, this pink variety is really fun for cut flowers. And I've definitely been wanting to grow more coneflowers in my garden. I have quadruple of the amount this year than I did last year and it's really fun to see them all coming back as perennials. Now this massive awesomeness right here is the Nepeta cat's pajamas. It is going insane. I'll let Jeff come closer so he can show you some of the activity on the bees. There's literally got to be a dozen bees on this um, just flying around all this area. They are so happy checking everything out and they just are all over this nepeta. It is getting about time where this nepeta is starting to flop from the center. So probably about the third week in June, I will come and I will cut this back by about 50% and allow it to refresh itself with blooms. Now I love it with the accent of the orange rocket Barbary in the back. I love the color contrast of the Barbary with the Nepeta in front. I think it's a really nice look. I also have the sweet almond verbena, which is doing beautiful and putting off lots of stalks. And this should absolutely be big and beautiful as the summer goes on. Now my Russian sage is already out of control. <laughs> I've already had to kind of pin him up a little bit. I need to do a little bit better of a job. I have got to corral this earlier on in the growing season when it's smaller, but it's doing beautiful. It's very prolific and it's doing really nice. Now a couple of new plants that I have down, tucked down in here. I have the um, blue mohawk soft rush grass here, which is a really interesting grass texture. I love the look of it. It should get about six inches taller than what it is right now. I think it's a really fun look. I try to incorporate a lot more grasses in my um, garden last season, and I failed on most of them except for these. These have done beautifully. 
and then coming along beside it is my yarrow garden and let me just get down here beside it these varieties are all cottage yarrow they are perennial in this area they are putting off lots of blooms i believe it's cottage yarrow rose cottage yarrow um, violet this is the yellow i have the white in here i have even like a coral color or a peach color as well these are doing beautiful now if i do not start harvesting these they will stop producing bloom blooms so one of my things that i'm doing tomorrow <laughs> right before i leave is i'm going to do a big harvest of flowers and give them all to my mom so she can hang out and enjoy them while we're gone but if i leave for my extended vacation and i leave all these here it will stop producing and i definitely want it to still be producing when i get back after vacation because i have not had the chance to incorporate these in an arrangement as of yet smoke bush here and it has grown quite significantly I'll put a side by side of it from the April garden tour it is growing beautifully it gave me blooms this year it's absolutely beautiful and it's about time for me to start cutting and harvesting on it one of the things I'm really wanting to do is from about here down is I want to start harvesting leaves and branches so that we can see more of the trunk of this particular shrub um, I want the trunk to become more of an architectural feature within the garden. So we will be looking at doing that. I'll do a whole um, video on how I'm looking at pruning this and working with it to kind of shape it the way I want. But I do love the contrast of this dark color. I'm gonna get Jeff to swing around to the side and kind of look at this garden as a whole as I talk. So he's gonna start with the smoke bush and then pan over to his left. I love the contrast of the darker smoke bush and then coming over here to the lighter golden fall sweeping red bud and then shifting over to you know, the medium green of the spirea and the beautiful ruby falls reaping red bud. I love the contrast of colors along the side of the garden. I do feel like I'm missing some additional colors in the spectrum. I would really like to incorporate some more kind of blue gray tones on this side. I think that would go a long way to kind of ground so it wasn't so extremely dark and extremely bright and um, that massive contrast. But I do like having some contrast so it's not all just straight green all across. It's amazing like if you imagine if this entire tree was green and so this beautiful kind of dark red plum color, it would all disappear, it wouldn't stand out at all. So I do really like the direction that the side garden is going with in terms of contrast and textures. I think it's been really fun and it's amazing how different it already is from last fall. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed today's garden tour. This is part one, so it's all the front and the side garden. It allowed me to go a little bit slower through the space showing you different things. The back garden is packed with so many different varieties that I know it's gonna take a while to get through it. So I can't imagine tacking another 40 minutes onto this video. So I hope you guys are cool with dividing it into two parts. And I hope you enjoyed today's video walking through this with me. As always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when my latest videos are up. And make sure you check me out on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks y'all. Thank you.